in this lecture, we're going to talk about the solubility product constant, KSP. And before we talk about KSP, let's talk about the solubility of ionic compounds. Now, all ionic compounds have the ability to dissociate into their ion form when added into water. For example, let's take ionic compound sodium chloride. When we add sodium chloride into water, it dissociates into two ions, sodium and chloride. Now, this reaction is called the forward reaction, or dissolution. The reverse reaction is just as likely to occur, and that's called precipitation. It's the formation of ionic compound from its ion form. Now, initially, when we add sodium chloride into water, the forward rate is much higher than the reverse rate. And eventually, however, though, dynamic equilibrium is achieved. At this point, the forward rate is equal to the reverse rate. And at this point, the solution is said to be saturated, which basically means that the concentration of the ions, or dissolved ions, is at its maximum. So these guys are at the maximum. Now, whenever we talk about normal equations, or normal reactions, not salvation reactions, we talk about equilibrium constants. In the same way, when we talk about salvation reactions, we can talk about something called solubility product constant, or KSP. Now, when we determine the normal equilibrium constant, we don't include solids and liquids in our calculation. And in the same way, when we talk about salvation, or solubility product constant, KSP, we don't include solids and liquids. For example, let's take the reaction of solid or ionic compound AB that associates in water into A plus B. Now since we don't count the solids, we don't count the liquids, but we do count gases and aqueous compounds, when we determine the KSP or the solubility product constant, we don't count this guy or the other guy. We only count these two guys. So KSP is equal to the concentration of A times the concentration of B. In this problem, we're given some unknown amount of barium sulfate and some unknown amount of water in a cup. Now we want to mix the two and wait for dynamic equilibrium to establish. Once equilibrium establishes, we're given that the KSP or the solubility product is equal to 1.0 times 10 to negative 10 at 25 degrees Celsius. So we want to find the solubility of barium sulfate. To find the solubility of barium sulfate, we must first write the dissociation reaction for barium sulfate. Therefore, we get one mole of barium sulfate in its solid form dissociates into one mole of barium plus one mole of sulfate, and both guys are in the aqueous form. The first step is to write the KSP equation. To write the KSP equation, we simply realize that this guy is a solid, and therefore he doesn't count in this equation. These guys only count because they're both aqueous. Remember, we never count solids and we never count liquids. Therefore, KSP is equal to the concentration of barium times the concentration of sulfate ion. Finally, since this guy is 1.0 times 10 to negative 10, we say KSP is equal to 1.0 times 10 to negative 10 equals, now since this is x and this is x, you write x is here. Now since barium, there's one mole of barium, we put a 1 in front of the x for barium. And since there's a 1 mole of sulfate, we put the 1 mole in front of the x. So we get 1x times 1x equals x squared. Finally, we use a little bit of algebra. We take the radical and we get x equals 1 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. That is, the solubility of barium sulfate in water at 25 Celsius is 1 times 10 to the negative 10 molar, or moles per volume.